Come with me to 2 Kings chapter 5, as we read verse number 1. The Bible says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. And he was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Somebody say, but. but. Bible describes Naaman with so many good things. He was a captain of the host. He was not a mean, he was not an ordinary person. He was a, a captain in the army. Hallelujah. He was a great man. With his master, he was great. Great in any sense. He was honorable. Hallelujah. Now, because of him, the Lord had brought deliverance to Syria. So, he was somebody through whom the Lord had used to bring deliverance to the, the, this country. The Bible says, was a mighty man in valor. Then there's a word, but, which almost seems to negate all the things that have been said before. He says, but he was a leper. This morning, my message to you is what I've entitled, the buts of life. As in B-U-T, small s. In life, you may have several things going well for you. You may have family going well, your finances going well, your job going well, children going well. Then one little thing in your area is the but. But perhaps maybe in your immigration status, for example. But perhaps in your boss who is very, very, very cantankerous towards you. That but is that which, if you don't take care, would seem to affect the 90% which is going well. He was a mighty man, he was strong, he went to war and all that. That leprosy seems to have taken away all the glory that he ought to have had. And in life, there are things like that. There are several buts in life. But I came to encourage you this morning. First point I want to make is that everyone has a but. If we're to project our lives on the screen, you see that everyone here has a but. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter how long you've served the Lord. There is a bat somewhere in your life. When we go to the Bible, we see all the people that we know about, that we, we speak about, they all had some bats in their life. Abraham was a man that God could, could, could meet with and speak with. Yet he had no child. Moses was a man that God would interact face to face and speak with. Yet he was a stammerer. Amazingly, God is going to use him to speak and deliver Israel from Egypt, yet the part of his body that he will use to commune with Pharaoh was his butt. He wants to speak and he'll be doing, uh, 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 can I? What sort of personality would he appear before Pharaoh? But that's God. Hallelujah. Amen. Here is David, a man after God's own heart. Someone who could sing psalms and, and, and brag about God on the backside of the desert, yet he had a moral problem. I mean, don't come and wag yourself be, be, be in front of King David if you're a lady. He will call you to his room right now. I mean, David was the man that he didn't joke around with, with ladies. The Bible says when he was old and they wanted to find out whether he was still alive or he was dead, they brought a young maiden to him, Abishag. And when he didn't touch her, they said, no, no, the man, he looks like his time has come. Because if it's David, David, ho, 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 he will really go to town. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about the bats that are in our lives. And I'm saying that everyone does have a bat. And if that is the case, we ought to pray to God to help us go to the bats in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here with me? Then the second point I want to make, because my time is short, amen, amen, is that everyone's but may differ. What is a but in my life will not be the same in your life. What concerns me and what is troubling me may be very light to you, and therefore you may not appreciate it. I was in church one day when a brother made a very, I don't even want to describe it, but the thing he said was not good. There's a sister in the church who was not well. Their brother stood up and said, ah, but this girl, why is she always getting sick? And then I asked, sickness too? Do, 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 do you invite sickness? Do you like being sick? But because perhaps he was a strong guy walking around, he didn't understand or he didn't appreciate how someone could be unwell for such a long time. Your butt may differ from mine, but please don't look down on my situation. Yes. 
When we go to the Bible, the various people that we consider, they all had different situations in their lives as bad. Naaman, it was leprosy. Hallelujah. Hannah, Rebecca, all these people had different sort of situations in their lives. Many years ago when I worked as a solicitor in the UK right here, we had a client. He was working with National West Mr. Bank. He was high up there. The job that he did, one of the perks he would enjoy is that he gets free travel. If the, the, the company is going to, they're sending them to go to Ireland or anywhere, he gets free flights, free hotels, all those things, the perks that some of us would like to have. But he had an immigration situation. So if they say that the conference or the program is in Madrid, he has to find an excuse. Oh, my daughter's school, they are having this PTA that I cannot miss. Next time they have to go somewhere, he will say, oh, my wife, I mean, he has to come up with something because of that bat in his life. But you'd be surprised that somebody who doesn't have that would wonder, but this guy, why does he have this opportunity? And he's always ducking and diving. When I was sent as a missionary to Venezuela, we had this church member. He and the wife, they got their first child. They were very happy. They were from Colombia, and they were living in Venezuela. Their mother, the wife's mother came all the way from Colombia to be with them. They had their first child. They were very happy and excited. Within a week, the child had died. They said there's this condition where the mother's milk does not work well with the child, some sort of medical condition. I'm sure if you're in the nest, you may know about it. The child died. What did they do? They didn't do anything wrong. What they were going through is something that maybe somebody else would not have gone through and may not appreciate it. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I'm saying that the bats that we go through are different one on, from the other. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Years ago in our church, I was then I received a phone call from my senior pastor. Come with me. I want to go somewhere with you. Went somewhere only to find out that one of our church members and the wife, their only child, only daughter, not knowing that the mother of the woman is into the occults. So the husband and the wife have gone to work. Daughter comes home from school. The, the grandmother of the baby takes a knife and cuts her throat. It became a police case and because I was a solicitor, I was called into it. I mean, you are serving the Lord, but your mother or your grandmother is into occults. See, you may not appreciate it because maybe you don't have that. But please, never sit on your high horse and criticize the part in somebody else's life. I hear with me, I'm beginning to go home. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me continue because of the time. The third point, never let the devil make you think or believe that the achievement of the bat in your life will make you happy. I will ring your bell. You see, the things we don't have seem to take place in our life so that it's the only craving we have. We must have it. It's that like when you're hungry and you go to a buffet this afternoon, you think that you'll be able to eat all the food over there. But you'd be surprised that you eat one, two, three, four, the back of your stomach is full. The enemy has a way of waving that thing that you are lacking in front of you. To the point where you think that until I have this thing, I'll never be happy. I had a client many years ago, same situation in immigration. He didn't have his documentation. He used to swear blind. The day I have my papers, I will travel here, I will go here, I will do this, I will do that. The day he got his documentation, he didn't go anywhere. He was right here. He didn't travel anywhere. Because you see, if you don't take care, then it will make you do things that you shouldn't do for that thing that you think will satisfy you when you have it. I call it carrot on a stick. When you want to ride a stubborn donkey that wouldn't move, you take a long stick, tie a string by the edge of it, and then tie a carrot to it. Sit on the donkey. Wave the carrot in front of it. Because he wants to eat the carrot, he will take one step towards the carrot. What happens to the carrot? What happens to the stick? It also moves forward because you, the rider, you are sitting on a donkey. You will take two, three, four steps as though it wants to grab the carrot. But because you are on it, you, it will never attain to By the time it realizes, it has gone to the destination you want to take it to. And so does the enemy. You want to have whatever, then he begins to wave it at you. You want to have a, a, a husband, and you have not had any Christian brother who has proposed to you. Because some of these Christian brothers, they, they, they don't speak. I don't know sometimes why they do that. An unbeliever will come and start buying you your favorite chocolate. Will start giving you lifts. And start saying all sorts of things. And if you don't take care, that part of not having a husband, the enemy will wave an unbeliever and you begin to wonder whether maybe this is the one that the Lord wants you to have. 
Pastor, I'll bring him to church. He'll become a Christian and then we can marry. No. What has dark, darkness got to do with light? Hallelujah. Can I continue? Yes. All right. The attainment of that part of your life is not what will make you happy. No. If you like, ask those who have got it. Yeah. You think that when you have a child, all your joy will be fulfilled. I can tell you about this woman whose son grew up and was angry with the mother. And as the son was quarreling with the mother, this boy took off the mother's wig and slapped the mother with a wig. Or this other lady whose son got angry with the mother and took a cane. You know a cane? Cane. Lash the mother. Yes. I'm not saying having a son is bad, but don't make it seem as though until you have that thing, you can never be happy. I had a church member when I was in a uh, pastoring our church in Florida. She said to me, Pastor, my husband, my husband, for the past three years, I've been telling him. I said, what is it? He said, whenever he goes to the, the toilet, he doesn't shut the door. And then you perfume the whole apartment with this. And I said, is that a problem? He said, yes. I said, why is it that when he goes there, you don't just follow him and then, and then close the door? And he shut the door so that the, the, the perfume will not come out because you are the one who is bothered by it for three years. I said to her, have you not read the scripture? Bible says the Lord, maybe I should show you that scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Lord does not make things straight. Look at Ecclesiastes 7 verse 13. Real quick. Consider the work of who? Scripture, please. Ecclesiastes 7, 13. It says, consider the work of God. For who can make straight which he hath made crooked? Who has made it crooked? Please, ask me, church. Who has made the thing crooked? God. Have you seen a straight river before? Have you seen a straight mountain before? Are the clouds straight? It is we human beings who make straight things. Straight pole, straight walls, straight road. God doesn't make things straight. So the husband that you've married, he is not straight. He is not perfect. His defect is that when he goes in there, I don't know whether it's amnesia or whatever, that stops him from closing that particular door. And because of that, there's a marital quarrel. But you see, you can also make yourself happy in the marriage. And close the door behind you so you can have the peace that you so desire. That bat she's been fighting for for three years has denied her of her happiness and she came to complain to me. So that's what the complaints you bring to pastors. You are just troubling them. You let me leave that for another time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Amen. laughs> Number four, God can use you to attain or achieve the bat in someone else's life whilst yours is still outstanding. Can I say that again? You are waiting on God for something in particular. It's not coming, but then God will use you to, to be that conduit, that avenue through which somebody's battle will come to pass. I remind you about Joseph. He had had two dreams. All right? You know about Joseph's dreams. Need not, I need not go into that one. When God repeats something to you, it is, it is a certainty. He makes an affirmation of what he's going to do. Now, here is Joseph. He's in prison. His dreams haven't come to pass. He's going to be a slave in Potiphar's house. He's now in prison. And then he wakes up one morning. The baker and the butler dream dreams. And their faces are totally contorted and confused. Here comes Joseph and he says, what's wrong with you? He said, we've had dreams and we don't understand the dreams. If I were Joseph, when I hear the word dream, if, Joseph, if the dream is coming from here, I'll go here. Because all his problems has been because of dreams. He's in prison because of dreams. Yet he says, tell me your dream. Because the God that I serve, he's the interpreter of dreams. So he tells them their dream, and within a day, within three days, their dreams come to pass. Yet his dream of yesteryear, it still hasn't been, been accomplished. Can you pass that test? When you are looking for a child, and your child is not coming after three years of marriage, and your neighbor comes to knock your door and says, please, I'm going to, 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 to London Central. Can you take care of my child for me? You need to get a job yourself. And then someone says, please help me to prepare my CV. And you're wondering, why are they coming to me? But it's only a test. And you have to pass that test. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Next point. It may well be, and I choose my words carefully. It may well be that you are not the one who has orchestrated the battle in your life. What did Naaman do for him to become a leper? 
all the ladies in the Bible were not having children. What was the cause? Did they do it? Did they bring it upon themselves? And lest you start accusing them that maybe they've had abortions or whatever. When you go and read, the Bible says that it was the Lord who had closed up their womb. So it is not the person's fault. Many years ago, I had a, a client sit before me. As she was talking to me about her legal matter, she started crying. She cried and cried and cried. And I opened my drawer, I took out my box of tissues, I placed it in front of her. She cried and she won't stop. Of course, you pay for time. So if you're going to use one hour to cry, we are okay. But I said, what is it? What? She wouldn't stop, you know, growing <laughs> all these things. After she finished, she said to me, lawyer, solicitor, the problem I have is that my husband and I have been married for a while and we don't have any children. My mother-in-law is in Africa and whenever she calls or we call her and my husband will pass the phone to her, the first thing she will say is, I want my grandchildren. No hello, no hi, no how are you doing? My grandchildren. As though that was not enough, now my husband has bought a ticket for her and she has come to live in our home. So I get up in the morning, Mama, good morning, what can I have for breakfast? My grandchildren. Give me my grandchildren. If children were bought in Sainsbury, we would have bought a lot of them. Bible says the fruit of the womb is the Lord's reward. And as she was talking, she started crying again. Pastor, we have done all the tests. They live in a country that, where medicine works. We've done every test. And the results have shown that my husband, he is the source of the problem. When we do shusha, shusha, it's only water that comes. He, see, there's, no, there's no power in these in this things. It's like having a pen with no ink. So I asked her, why won't you tell your mother-in-law that her son is the source of this, your problem, that she's always asking for my, my grandchildren, my grandchildren. She looked at me in the face and said, in our culture, in our culture, it is not right for me to tell my mother-in-law that her son, in fact, I almost got angry with her. You are being peppered morning, noon, and night. The source of the problem is not you, yet you are enduring it. That's a bat. So when you are going through a bad situation and you are not the cause, don't think that God has left you. Hallelujah. Amen. God, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Let me try and conclude because of the time. Saints of God, we never know why and how these things happen. But through the story of Naaman, we can understand that perhaps there are some reasons for which these things happen. Before I get there, let me just add that don't try and use your human machinations or your human arrangements to resolve the bats in your life. It brings about problems. Sarah tried it. What do we have right now? Problems of Israel and Palestine. You try to work out your own arrangements concerning the things of God? No, it won't work. Hallelujah. So why do some of these things happen? Using Naaman's story. Number one. I have 11 minutes. Hallelujah. Number one, I have put down here, it is so that you and I will draw nearer to God. Sometimes a little challenge in your life may, what, may be what will cause you to pray some more. It may be what will cause you to come to church. It may be what you make you fast and pray because something else is, is, is peppering you somewhere. When you read Revelation 4 verse 11, the Bible says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. When people are not pleasing to the Lord, he can just pr press a little button, and then now they begin to have challenges, and now they run to God. Many there be who have come to church in the dark times of their lives, and of course, by the grace of God, they stayed. I don't know about you. Stop looking on the carpet. Look at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Number two, or oh, the other side is okay, A, B, and C, but it doesn't matter. Why doesn't, well, why doesn't God give us answers immediately when we pray to him? I don't know why, but you see, when you read Job 23 verse 10, he says, when thou hast tried me, I shall come forth as gold. The gold in you and I only comes out through trials. There are things in you that you may not even know they exist. 
But God will take you through some situations and you see that, ah, there was some gold in you. I'll tell you a story of a little boy whose mother sent him to go and buy something in the night. Not in the UK, but in the country where as he had to walk along the footpath, he had to go through a cemetery. As he was walking during the day, he could see his, his path. So he walked and went to buy the item. And on his way back, he had gotten dark. And unbeknown to him, his return path, they had dug a new fresh, a fresh grave there. So young boy walking, singing, chanting, whatever, he ends up falling into this grave. So he starts trying to jump up. You jump up. Jump up. Five minutes, ten minutes. He was still trying. Then he heard a voice from the corner of the grave. Young man, stop trying to jump up. You can't. Hey! You guess, guess what happened? Some strength came from somewhere. He jumped out of that six-footer grave because he had heard a voice in the dark of night in the grave at that hour. Where did the strength come from? It didn't come from outside. He had it in him. But that little voice he heard was what caused him to jump out. God may want you to do some things and overcome some things only by reason of that thing you go through. So Job says that, as you have tried me, I have come forth as gold. God is expecting some gold to come out of you in the name of Jesus. Next point is that sometimes it's to bring the person, usually an unbeliever, back to God. Back to God. So in Psalm 119 verse 67, the Bible says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, now that I've been afflicted, he says, I have kept your word. People sin against God, misbehave and all that. Then when they face situations, then they come to God. Verse 71 of the same Psalm 119, he says, It was good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The affliction is what caused the psalmist to learn the law statutes. Someone asked a group of prisoners, how is it that in prison, prisoners seek the Lord and they come to know the Lord in the prison cells? One answered and said, over here in the prison, this doesn't work. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, person to person that don't work. You are in your cell for several hours a day. You are kept in there. Nobody comes to you. They push your foot under the, under the door. He said, this doesn't work. Only this works. So now that person to person is not working, you begin to seek God. That is why in the midst of the affliction as prisoners, many of them are converted to Christ. But that will never be your portion in Jesus' name. You don't need to be in the belly of the whale before you come crying out to God because you're already delivered from that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many years ago, I was our pastor in our church in the New Cross area. We went on outreach. And then as we were talking, I met this young boy. I said, oh, give your life to Christ. This, this, this. He looked at me in the face. He said, what can your God do for me? He said, look, I have clothes to wear. I have a place to stay. Then he said, I have money in my pocket. What can your God do for me? But you see, then God will touch some part of his wherever. Then something will begin to face it. Then you now start asking questions. There are people who only through affliction would they turn to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have six minutes. <laughs> Sometimes God wants to take certain things out of our lives. God wants to rid us of certain things. And the only way is through challenges. When you read um, uh, Isaiah 48 verse 10, it says, I have refined you, but not as silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the fairness of suffering. In the fairness, in the midst of suffering, then you are able to be delivered. These ladies, young Christian ladies in their cell group, wanted to understand a scripture in Malachi 3, verse 2 and 3. He says, He is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. He shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. So they asked themselves, How does, how does this, this scripture happen? So they went to the house in the workshop of a silversmith. When they got there, they sat down quietly and they were watching the silversmith. He had a lump in, in a tongue, a long tongue, and he had pushed it into the fire and he was just waiting. So as they watched, they saw things falling out. And the man had still the, 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 the tongue in the midst of the fire. Then they saw that the, 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 the lump started getting shinier and brighter. So after a while, they asked the gentleman, please, can you tell us about the process? He said, yes. 
Number one, I have to put this lamp in the midst of the fire, in the middle, the hottest part. That is where the fire can have the effect that it needs to have. He said, when it's in there, all the, 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 the useless part, is called the dross, all that comes out. Then he says, then he asked him, how do you know that the process is over? He said, I only would know that it's finished when I can see my image in that, on that object. God puts us in some sufferings to deliver us from pride, from ego, from, from all these self, self things, you know, the lust and the, the things that we don't need in us. The fleshy things. When they fall out of us, only would we be taken out when God can see his image in us. So they understood that scripture. Sometimes the challenges we go through are only because God wants to see his image in us. Hallelujah. My final point for this morning. Why do these things happen? It's only because all things work together for good. You know that scripture, Romans 8. All things work together for good. All things will work together only when you are at the end. But when you are going through it, you will never know why you are going through this but. But what I need you to understand is that God is not trying to destroy you. God is not trying to let you leave the faith. God is not trying to get you to backslide. He is right there in the midst of the fire with you. If you don't believe me, go and ask the Hebrew boys. He was with them in the fire. Amen. Hallelujah. His name is Jehovah Shammah, the God who is with us. Glory be to God. Amen. I end by sharing Luke chapter 1 with you. The Bible says Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth, they were righteous. They served God. They were not unbelievers. They were not backsliders. Zachariah actually was serving the Lord right there doing his work. There will be some Christians who press pause on their Christianity when they are having hardships. It may well be that Zachariah would be there. A church will come and say, please, can you pray for me to have a child? And he'll pray for the child. Somebody made a joke and said, when pastors are, are going through challenges, you never know because pastors are like goats. When goats are sweating, you don't see. You don't have goats around here, so you don't know. Yeah, when a pastor will be standing and preaching powerfully, there is something that may be working against him, but he's still preaching. Hallelujah. Here's Zachariah. Maybe baptizing somebody's child, yet he and the wife had no child. But he was doing his work in the house of the Lord. So it was his turn to go into the Holy of Holies to burn the incense. And as he is there, the angel comes to him and says, I am Gabriel. I've come from the presence of the Lord. I've come to tell you that you are going to have a child. So much was it that it was a shock and he began to doubt. The Bible says, when the Lord turned our captivity, we are them that dreamed. The Lord is going to turn your captivity in the name of Jesus. Amen. You missed a good place to say a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. That but in his life, he said, the Lord is going to take care of it. He was wondering and doubting because time may have passed for it to erode his confidence and his faith. If your faith has been eroded, I came to stir it up for you this, up, this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So he says you would have a child and you call the child John. Nobody understands why God does these things, but there's a, there's a verse I'm going to read to you, and I end with that one. I've got one minute. Come with me to Luke chapter 1, starting from verse 76. It says, and thou, child, so this is Zechariah now speaking after the child has been born, and this is part of what he says. He says, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, and thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. I can go on and on. God had determined that before his son Jesus Christ comes upon the scene, Jesus must have a forerunner. Somebody must come before Jesus. And God had determined in his, in, in his infinite wisdom that the child to come before Jesus would be the child, only child born of Zechariah and Elizabeth. A forerunner doesn't come 2,000 years before. A forerunner doesn't come a hundred years before. A forerunner must just come right there and then Christ appears. So God had determined that John the Baptist, the only child of Elizabeth and Zechariah, would come just at the time when Christ would be born. God had determined that all their years of waiting, of crying, of pleading, because the, the angel said, the Lord has heard your prayer. He must have been praying. So I came to encourage somebody, keep praying, hallelujah. Amen. Say to your neighbor, keep praying. Yeah, God had had their prayer, and the solution was that John would come, but John must come just before Christ. Saints of God, I'm not out of word, I'm just out of time. But the point I want to make is that don't let that but in your life cause you to backslide. 
Maybe you need to tell somebody who didn't come to church this, this morning that that situation you're going through, God is going to see you through. God is going to come along with you. Come back to the house of the Lord. Come and serve the Lord. God is a faithful God. Faithful is he who has called us, and he also will do it. Why don't you rise up onto your feet? Just bow down your head right there in your seat. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for the encouragement of your word. Cause us to trust in you completely. No matter what is going on around us. Oh Lord, you are not a God of circumstances. You are the God who controls all affairs. You run affairs of men, Father God. We give you thanks that for whatever battle we are going through, Lord, you will come through for us. You will deliver us from it. At the end of it, oh Father God, you would have the victory. We will have the victory and you would have the glory. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's welcome our pastor. Amen and amen. amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Would you like to take your seat? Very clear message there. Whatever you are struggling with, Naaman had his leprosy with all his success. Military giant. And he will cover that leprosy. Amen. And only, well, no matter what you are hiding, God has seen it. Just hand it over to him. But don't let that cause you to give up. If you read the, the book of Hebrews, those who have gone before us, they had all issues. Some of them didn't even receive the promise, but they held on. Amen? Amen. Keep holding on. That but can change your life. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Ian. That word. Don't let it go over your head just like that. Put it into practice. You can visit our channel, the YouTube channel, and listen and watch again and even share with others. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, would you seal that word? Would you bless your servant? Whatever but we might have in our lives, you, God, you know it. You know it, and you can do something about it. Turn our situations around, that all the glory will go to your precious holy name. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are traveling, those that are traveling in and those that are traveling out. Would you carry your people as on eagles' wings, oh God, and protect and bless and increase us in all the things that we are trusting you in. We give you praise. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Now and always. Amen? Amen. Why don't you give glory to God? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Pastor again.